Adrian. Hey, what's going on, Ed? Good to see you, man. It's been a while. How have you been? been? I've been good. How about you? Doing well. Doing well. So how's the life inside of professional services treating you? Yes, absolutely. It's been fun. It's a new year. We've got uh, several new projects that are coming up. Yeah. I'm pretty excited for the upcoming year. Awesome. Well, let's uh, see what's going on. Do you have time to grab a little snack or something that sure. we can catch up? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Thanks for driving, man. No problem. Hop in. Doors open. Why was I not expecting such a pragmatic choice of vehicles for you, Adrian? Because it fits my supply chain perspective. <laughs> Only go as big as you need. I had no idea what to expect. <laughs> so you are in professional services now. Yes. And you spent a lot of years in client support. Yes. Global customer support, customer care, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Two different worlds, but yet one really helps with the other. What I mean by yes. that is mm -hmm. uh, the more successful, the more rigorous the implementations, the more rightly aligned the solution is with uh, what people are expecting. I'd imagine that would make for a more delightful experience and, and not require so much support in the back end. Is that a correct statement? That is correct. Um, in terms of the, um, the bigger, more complex projects, um, obviously we spend a lot more time designing. We spend a lot more time planning and analyzing. Uh, because of that, we spend more time doing development. We spend probably twice as long doing testing. Um, all for the sake that when we do go live, everything goes as smoothly as possible. Uh, granted, we still run into issues. I mean, that, that's to be expected. But as a professional services member, we stay on board until we feel completely confident that the project is working as designed without bugs before it even gets transmitted or uh, handed over to our support team. So by the time they actively have to start you know, reviewing things and, and looking at support issues surrounding the new implementation, it works without a problem. And it's been about a year since you've made the transition from support to professional services, correct? Yes. Okay. What's been the most challenging part of making uh. that transition? <laughs> That's, uh, um, again, double-edged sword a bit, you're, you're seeing the situation from opposite ends of the spectrum, I guess. Right. The biggest challenge is really just distance. A lot of the, um, you know, obviously in terms of applications, I really only consider myself a resident expert at one, but I support and implement against three or four different applications. Okay. So, um, when I am in trouble or do run into a problem with an application that I'm not quite as exposed to, and that expert is in Wayne, finding time to spend with that individual can definitely be a challenge. Um, you would think with a, an IT company like us, you know, distance shouldn't matter. We should be able to work anywhere, do anything, doesn't matter. But not being face to face with certain members of your team. I don't care how you cut it. It's yeah. a challenge. Yeah. It's very much a challenge. So I'm getting a little curious. Normally I ask where we're going on these rendezvous. And <laughs> this time I didn't because I have full and complete trust and faith in you, Adrian, that we're going to somewhere good, huh? Sure. We are headed to Brewster's. Well, Brewster's ice cream is special. And interestingly, I've never seen one like this in a strip center. I've always known <laughs> Brewster's as the standalone little huts, you know? Yes, yes. Well, huh. it'd be an interesting experience for both. Well, it's a cloudy, cool day. I'm going to have an adventure, but I may just have to get something in a bowl so I can stay warm in your car <laughs> as we enjoy it. Sure. I'll never say no to Brewster's, though. Let's do it. <laughs> So that is the craziest blue, blue ice cream I've ever seen. <laughs> Cotton candy called? explosion. <laughs> and it has rock candy. You know the rock candy from your childhood oh, yeah. where it explodes in your mouth at the slightest touch of uh, any liquid on yeah. your tongue. It's awesome. <laughs> I was going to ask you, why did they call it explosion? But now uh, you've already <laughs> answered that question. 
I think one of the uh, interesting elements of any of the folks in professional services would be the FaceTime with customers in the marketplace. Yes. And you're having that FaceTime a bit outside of the sales context. Yes. And more from a pragmatic, let's get things done, let's get value created, let's uh, deliver on, on the promises that we've been discussing. Yes. So when you're when you're talking to those customers, what, what are you hearing generally in the marketplace? Are there recurring priorities that uh, keep coming in? Um, <laughs> honestly, it changes. Yeah? It changes um, month to month, week to week. Um, case in point, I have a very large client that I'm uh, actively working on some projects with now. And a year ago, invoices were not a priority. Uh, and then shortly before the uh, end of the year, invoices became a priority. Um, I'm working with another project, uh, with another uh, large um, company, where at the time, ship notices were not a priority to them. Um, they felt the need that it was not necessary for them as a company to be notified of in-transit shipments. But sure enough, they changed their tune after getting complaints from many of their suppliers. So um, in terms of what's important to them, it really does change and you just kind of have to roll with the punches and try to, you know, as best as you can, set their pro their expectations in terms of how quickly those things can be implemented. Your answer surprises me a bit in that when I think about a typical customer of Alemica, mm -hmm. their large multiple million billion dollar entities Yes. Been around for a long time. Yep. They have large operations distributed all throughout the globe. Uh huh. And some of the preconceived you know, notions that you have generally uh, about companies like that is they are slow to move and yes. slow to pivot and, and a bit like trying to turn a large ocean liner. Yes. Uh, from your experience, though, you're, you're communicating to me that uh, maybe reality is a bit different than the assumptions. Yeah, well, the thing is, is you're right. They are slow to move and they're slow to react. But once they make that decision, they want it done instantly. Mm. So, you know, I have to remind them oftentimes that, hey, there is a development window, a development cycle. We do want to provide a quality, you know, deliverable for you. So this is not something that we want to rush. What about from a project planning perspective, or just being a master of your craft. Are <laughs> things changing in that world? Are methodologies being updated or is it still sort of um, tried and true project management principle uh, type of things that still got me? Um, I believe the project management methodology is still there. But from a development standpoint, I think everyone probably remembers the old V model um, that took months and months and months for development to actually be migrated mm -hmm. to production. Um, at Alemica, I think we're taking a much more um, more streamlined approach in that we're trying to not necessarily become agile enabled per se, but we're moving away from that very long, concentrated V model um, diagram that we that most of us were familiar with, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Okay. Just things are moving a little bit faster. So at the end of the day, they're mm -hmm. getting to that uh, delivered value much more quickly. Absolutely, yes. And uh, at the same time, it seems like the flexibility around how to achieve that value has been neither broadened nor enhanced as a result. Yes, it has. Okay. So what's next for you, Adrian? What's next? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Where are you aspiring to go? Well, for right now, it's a matter of just getting back into the uh, into the office and uh, <laughs> putting my head down and cranking out some code and doing some debugging. Um, long term, um, I'd like to do a little bit more um, and learn a little bit more about project management and apply that skill to some much larger, more complex projects. Well, best success to you. I Appreciate think that it. Sounds good. Thanks. And we'll 
enjoy finishing up our brightly colored ice creams. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Adrian. Really appreciate it. Oh, anytime.